Hi, it's Heather. I'm a certified arborist in Bloomington, Indiana, and today I thought we'd talk a little bit about candling. Um, I'm sorry it's been a while. It's been absolutely nuts, and I'm not going to complain about it. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't. I didn't think I could really do this while I was holding a camera or my phone. So. Um, you're kind of seeing a done deal here. Um, so candling is where we shorten the new growth on um, normally pines. Um, some spruce do benefit from having their candles shortened. Um, the other thing that can happen during candle time is we can also thin out the number of candles we have at one node. Um, so uh, back talking about pruning, because in a way this is a kind of pruning, um, we were talking about how we should only have um, three stems arising from one growing point. And so um, the cool thing about thinning out candles um, is there's no wood involved here. Let me let me grab one to show you. Um, so these have all been shortened. Here's one. Let's uh, kind of let's see if you can see. Yeah. So there you can see. Um, we do have, you can see where the vascular system is. There's some little little dots and you can see there's sap and um, live tissue, but there's no wood. And so um, thinning candles is a lot easier for a tree to recover from than um, actually pruning. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing about candling is um, it helps us keep plants in the same place for a long time. So this is one of the main techniques used in Japan to um, keep pines in gardens for hundreds of years. Um, and two, like, you know, since the plant is going to be um, not just focused on growth, um, it will be more likely to build um, lignin in the fall, so it will have strong wood, and um, that will help prevent breakage uh, during high winds or ice events, as well as um, it will make it less prone to damage during droughts. Um, so uh, the number of candles that a tree produces depends on the type of tree. Um, this is a black pine and oh, there's probably, gosh, you know, there's quite a few. Um, like white pines normally have five candles at one, one node. Um, some, I think Mugos have quite a bit more. Um, but thinning out the candles, so A, you know, think of these as future branches. So like, yeah, they're going to open into needles, but they will be the branches of the future. And so um, by thinning the candles, we are setting our trees up to have good crotches and that way we won't have breakage and um, all that good stuff. So um, some other stuff about paneling, sorry, is ideally we want to do this um, as the candles are opening. Um, you'll kind of see there's kind of almost like a papery, cellulose stuffy that kind of holds the needles um, together. And so we want to um, see these start to open. 
and um, if we uh, candle bef it's you know if you can wait um, and for for until the candle is fully extended uh, that way it's not going to grow much more after you cut it which is nice so you kind of know how tall it's going to be um, and what are some other benefits oh and so when we thin the candles <clears throat> That's going to make some chores like um, getting the needles out. Like black pines are really, really cool, but um, they do need some assistance getting their um, spent candles out in the fall. So, you know, anytime we can make it easier for a tree to drop its own candles, it's just like better. And also this is going to help... Um, help there be less moisture around the buds. So, um, you know, we might not have as much problems with fungus. And also, um, you know, when we have kind of a, a clearer area here, um, it helps us be able to see pests like um, pine sawyer flies. Um, because those can do a lot of damage and you know the quicker we can get to those the better um, you can feed them to your birds they like them um, but anyway I'm sorry I'm not showing you in action um, in doing this because so to start at the top and work your way down because you are going to get sap all over yourself so I have a nasty shirt that I cover up with. Um, I do use uh, a hand pruner to do this. I know some people snap them with their fingers, but that is like a lot, a lot, a lot of sticky stuff on your hands. And, you know, God forbid you got to answer the phone or something. Um, also, to get this stuff off, um, say your cutting blades. Um, personally, I like uh, using Mr. Clean Concentrate in water. Uh, it's nice, it's just citric acid, so um, I don't feel bad putting that down the drain. And um, getting it off your clothes. Um, you can also throw in a little Mr. Clean with your laundry. Um, you might need to pre-treat it a little bit for um, you know, something that will remove sap. And then um, finally, oh, in your hair. If you get it in your hair, uh, like I do, you can actually use some um, coconut oil. Seems to work pretty well. Um, I guess you could use baby oil too, but um, coconut oil works really well. So anyway, so in our area, candling uh, usually start somewhere the end of May and maybe into the first two weeks of June. It's kind of a time specific thing and I'll be gosh darn, um, you know, it used to be that, you know, there were very distinct seasons like, you know, spruce got candled in March and then we could prune them in the summer and then pines but everything's getting all mixed up so anyway you just kind of got to go by by looks and um and that's that so if you have any questions um you can hit me up in the comments down below you can also find my email address um in my about section on my page and then, um, yeah, just have a great day. If this made sense to you, hit the like button and, you know, tell your friends, whatever, and have a great day. Bye.